again. God's word for our meditation tonight is found in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Paul says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, give us your heart and mind, so that our life may be blameless, respecting, and loving others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, fellow thankful people, why are you here tonight? Okay. You might think, Pastor, that's a dumb question. I'm here tonight to give thanks. And you know what? That's a good thing. Okay. I'm happy that you're here tonight giving thanks to the Lord. But as we're looking at celebrating Thanksgiving tonight and tomorrow, I'd like to share with you just a few little facts. First of all, that at least to the best of my knowledge, in the Christian church, and for the last 2,000 years, as Christians have been following liturgical practice and following a church year, in the church year, you don't find a traditional time to celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Pastor, then why are we here tonight? Why do we have church? It's become a thing in America. It's really something that was started by our government back around the time of Abraham Lincoln, who instituted and thought it would be a good day to have a national day of thanksgiving, and the church has picked up on that. Okay, that's why one of the reasons that we're here tonight. But then that raises a question to, in my mind. Why in the church for 2,000 years was there never really an official thanksgiving holiday? And if you go back before that, to God's Old Testament church, there was not a real official Thanksgiving holiday in the Old Testament church here either. And I really don't think that that's, you know, we might find it strange, but I see that there's a reason for that. Okay? Because while we're here tonight, while many Americans and many American Christians and North American Christians celebrate Thanksgiving, whether it's today or whether it's Canadian Thanksgiving, which if my memory serves me correctly, comes sometime in October. We tend to localize our Thanksgiving. We tend to pare it down or whittle it down to the smallest amount that we can give. And so the sinful nature in us starts to think that we're really thankful to God if we show up here in church. And that's a good thing. Don't, I'm not saying it's not. But Thanksgiving is so much more than that. Listen to what Paul says in our text again. Very brief, very concise, very simple words when he says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. Did you catch it there? Give thanks in all circumstances. You can understand that to be said to, as it says up here, in all things give thanks. Or you can even understand it, always give thanks. Thanksgiving is much, much more than a day. It's a way of life. Thanksgiving, we as God's people have reason to give Him thanks and praise every single day. And it's important for us to understand the reason for our thanks. And maybe it's not always easy to see, but just looking at our verse that's before us tonight, God commands it. Give thanks in all circumstances. And then we're told, for this is God's will for you. This is God's will. This is a command, which is reason enough which brings and begs the question, how thankful are we? 
How many times do we go through the courses of our day unthankful, with ingratitude, with an attitude that we've worked for what we've got, we put the sweat of our brow into it, our time, our effort, our money, and it's something that we have earned. No, that's not how it works. God says we're, he's owed thanks just because he commands it and because of who he is. The almighty God, the creator of the universe, the giver of our lives, the one who, who created this wonderful world and universe in which we live, the one who has given us our bodies, our health. Scripture tells us he's the one who provides our food, even though we work hard for it. He's the one who gives us health and the abilities to do that. Who keeps us safe so that we can do that. He's the one who causes the sun to shine, the rain to fall, the crops to grow. Scripture tells us that Jesus, God has put all things under Jesus' feet. He is in control of the entire universe for the good of his church. The reason that we're here and breathing and happy and satisfied and thankful and worshiping tonight is because God is our wonderful creator and preserver. He's the almighty God. That's reason enough, but it's not the only reason. The other reason, again, is who he is. We hear more about who he is as Paul says, this giving thanks in all circumstances is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It, throughout Paul's letters in the New Testament, this little three-word phrase, in Christ Jesus, and actually it's a three-letter phrase in the Greek too, but it, it gives a beautiful picture of the Christian. It is a picture of the Christian standing in a sphere of all surrounding us. And that sphere that surrounds us is Jesus. It's like a protective covering, a protective shield. It's something else Paul talks about in his letter to the Ephesians when he says that uh, when he talks about the love of God and, and, and how, that how we can't even understand the breadth and the height and the depth of God's love for us that's in Christ Jesus. We're told by, in, in Scripture that the Lord Jesus will never leave us, will never forsake us. That's the picture of the Christian. As our sins have been taken away, as we've been washed clean in the blood of Christ, as faith has been worked in our hearts, we stand surrounded by Christ Jesus, eternally secure. And that is the reason that Paul says we have a reason to give thanks. We have a Savior who loved us so much that came into this world and became one of us, who put himself under the law of God and kept it perfectly in our place, who suffered the punishment and the hell that we deserve at his trial, at his death, who rose again to guarantee us that we're the first fruits of those who will be the first, he's the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, that heaven is ours. That's reason to give thanks. Because God is our creator, he is our savior, he's the one who will never leave us and forsake, or forsake us and will not let the gates of hell prevail against his church. Okay, that's the reason to be thankful. Now how far does that thanks go? Tonight I've had a chance to introduce to you my least favorite section of scripture. And I don't say that in an irreverent way, okay? That's what my sinful nature thinks about this Bible passage. It doesn't like it. I bristle whenever I hear these words. Because the first thought that comes to my mind is, Lord, are you insane? Listen again to, again to the words. Give thanks in all circumstances. In all things, give thanks. Think about what that means. The first thing that my sinful nature says is, Lord, you're nuts. You mean that I'm supposed to be thankful when things are going bad? Lord, are you telling me that as a pastor, 
I've got some man or woman that's lost their spouse to death or to disease that I'm supposed to tell them you should be thankful about this? Lord, are you trying to tell me that somebody who is having difficulty at their job or maybe they're having difficulty in their relationships or in their marriage, that they're supposed to be thankful about that? Come on! That makes no sense at all. If there was ever a definition of insanity, that's it. And I can honestly tell you this, and I think you have to admit it along with me, we are not thankful in all circumstances. Talk to my own family, and I'll tell you I have a, chance, I have a, a tendency to gross, okay? to complain a bit, maybe to be a little bit sarcastic. There are times in my own life dealing with myself, or as I've seen other people go through hard times, I've said this, and I've, I've had the gall to say it to God, do you really know what you're doing? Don't you think you could ease up here a little bit? What's going on here? That's usually what my tendency is. What does God mean by giving, up this, giving thanks in all circumstances? And he's, you know what? He is telling us, give me thanks when things are good, and give me thanks when things are bad. Now, I can tell you that, let's say somebody calls me up and says, Pastor, I've got terminal cancer. The first thing from Scripture that, that I'm going to share with them is not going to be this verse. Okay? But that doesn't mean that this doesn't become part of that process. Why? What reason would I have to be thankful if I hear that my spouse is terminally ill, or I've found, some, I've found out that I have a terminal illness, or whatever that, that grim circumstance might be. The reason to give thanks is that we have a Lord who promises us that even in those difficult, bad times, that He doesn't leave us or forsake us. He gives us the promise that all things work for the good of those who love God, who have been called according to His purpose. He gives us the promise which says, I am convinced that, need, that, that, uh, that nothing in this world, not angels, nor demons, neither powers or principalities, nor anything in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. We might not be able to understand it and fathom it, but the Lord is never going to let us down. If we have an illness and He doesn't take it away, He's going to take the believer to heaven. There are times he tells us, God says that he disciplines those that he loved. And sometimes difficult times help to strengthen our faith. God always has our good in mind. This is the reason that I can be thankful in every circumstance. But how do I get there? You know what? That's not easy. I feel like a hypocrite talking about this to you tonight because... It's not easy to do. It's not easy to feel that way. Well, our verse here is part of two verses that come before it. Listen to what Paul says again in verse 16 and 7. He says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. All these things are. You know, and you backed it up a little bit, and the first thing thought that I get is, okay, this isn't getting any easier. Rejoice always? <laughs> yeah. Say that to me when I crawl out of bed in the morning. Say that to me when my knees are aching from arthritis. Rejoice always. Again, we do have the reason. It's the same as thanks. Then you get pray continually. Are you nuts? I mean, is that, is that, is God telling me that I'm supposed to walk around on this, on the face of this earth every day with my hands folded down like this and, and constantly, and constantly praying? That's an impossibility. We would not be able to, it would put ourselves in peril even and not be able to get things done. What does that mean? It means having an attitude of prayer. 
It means having an attitude as we're going through life that the Lord is walking by our side, He knows what's going on, and that we commend ourselves to His good and gracious care, knowing that He's always going to do our best. Prayer is not only talking to God, that's one side of the conversation. The other part is listening to His Word. And so as we have this attitude, as we're growing in His Word, as we're growing in forgiveness, as we're growing in the Scriptures, as our faith is being strengthened when we take His body and blood with the bread and wine and the Lord's Supper, our faith is strengthened. This is how the Lord enables us to be thankful all the time. Not just in bad times, but also for the good. Don't want to be a negative valley tonight. There's lots of good things that we have reason to be thankful, and very often we're not always mindful of that either. When we think about our families, our spouses, our children, parents, loved ones in the faith who are now in heaven with the Lord, when we think about this wonderful creation and the things that we like to do for enjoyment that God blesses us with, the food and clothes on our back, the wonderful luxuries that he provides us with, this wonderful land in which we live, in which we still have freedoms to worship God as our conscience directs us in freedom, our school systems, our government, our law enforcement, the passions that we have, the area of the world in which we live, our communities, our schools, friends, the list goes on and on. Many, many reasons to be thankful, good reasons to be thankful. What a good and gracious, wonderful God that we have. Thankfulness. This is God's will for us. And we have all the reason in the world. So as we go home tonight, as we gather together tomorrow with whoever we gather with, whether it's friends, family, whether we're on our own, let's not just keep in mind the food, the football games and the entertainment that are on TV, and the Thanksgiving Day Parade, all our wonderful things and blessings. But let's keep at the forefront of our minds our God, our Savior, the one who created us, most importantly, the one who redeemed us. And because of that, we have this promise. He's never going to let us down. We're always going to have what we need. It might not be everything we want, but it will always be everything we need. And the reason that we know that is because God never breaks a promise. And if we ever doubt that, we just look at the cross. Because that is God's promise, guaranteed to us that everything he says he needs, every promise he makes, carries out. And that is what gives us the reason, the motivation, the joy to be thankful always. May God help us to do that. To his glory, for our good, and for the furthering of his kingdom. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please join me in singing the Song of Mary. You can find that on page 57 in the front of the hymnal.